Is this just the beginning of the dump for crypto? Or was 41K the local bottom and we're about to pump hard? Well, I'm seeing some different things in Bitcoin, ETH, Sol, BNB, and the alts. So let's break it down in today's video. So Bitcoin has been dumping and a lot of people have been saying, what the hell's going on? I can give you a little bit of perspective and Crypto Man Ran posted something really good and it can tell you a little bit about what's happening and why alts are still pretty much doing well and Bitcoin has had a sell off. So he talks about the GBTC being worth $25 billion. Now it's been locked and no one could redeem it. So no one could basically take their Bitcoin and sell it and get cash. But now it's been opened up. And because it's opened up, there's been people holding Bitcoin for a very long time and probably would rather go into things like iBit or BlackRock's ETF. But if you're selling that off and there's no OTC buying over the counter, so it's on the market, it's going to suppress the price and push it down. So let's look at Bitcoin and see what has been happening. So I did tell you guys last week, that I thought Bitcoin was gonna top out here at about 48 and that we would likely see with the ETF pump and then a dump. Um, I also said that on a tweet just about a month ago. I said, these are the two scenarios. One, we'd have a sell the news event or two, we'd have a little pump and sell the news event. Pretty much exactly what we got. And it's kind of standard when everyone thought it was just gonna pump and many people were long and they got liquidated and then they went long again and got liquidated again. So they're just grabbing liquidity. And now everyone thought, okay, maybe go 44. I thought 44 would be the likely level it would go to, but we see that Kijin, this red level right here, and that level basically tells us there's equilibrium. So it brings the price where there's buyers and sellers equally in the market. And so that's a 50% retrace level. Now what will happen next? Well, it's kind of teetering Bitcoin. And what I mean by teetering is our Chiku spans just barely bullish. It's pretty much bearish or neutral. We see that our Tenkin is above our Kijin, so we're still good. And as I told you guys before, I won't get bearish until we start seeing the green level, our Tenkin, cross below the red level, or when I see that we break into the cloud and potentially on the other side. So Bitcoin is kind of in a shaky territory and it may have more sell-offs, so we could see some bearish things happen. Right now is time to play defense, not to go on a heavy offensive. So that means I'm keeping my funds on the sideline, not adding more. I'm just waiting a little bit longer and I'm gonna see what is the result of this week. Now, could we have a pump and go right back into bullishness? Yes, but it's always better to wait and not catch a falling knife, which we have right now. So next up, what will happen for Bitcoin? I think we could see it recover this week on Monday and people will kind of be surprised as, as many are starting to get bearish. And if we go down to the four hour candles, the four hour candles are very bearish. So on the short term, we have the Kumo twist that's bearish. We're below the cloud. Um, we're below the candlesticks on the Chiku. We have a bearish TK cross that happened on the 13th of January and Saturday. So we're seeing a lot of bearish things setting up on a lower time frame, And that could either be a really good fake out opportunity, or it could be the start of potentially a bigger sell off and a push down towards 40,000. So we're watching that very, very carefully. So first off, we're going to be looking at Ethereum, Solana and BNB. Then we're going to look at some alts that are looking bullish and some that are looking a little bit bearish. If you're holding for the whole term, you may want to think about taking some profit on the ones that are kind of starting to look bearish if you're still in profit. You could also hold and sell some. You don't have to sell your whole bag, but I would be selling off some of these right now. Personally, at least 20, 25% of those bags, potentially seeing them go lower and buying them again. So I'm gonna make a plan for that. But first, let's look at Ethereum. All right, so looking at Ethereum, it's pretty much following the path that I thought. It went up to that 26, 50 level, which we were waiting for. Great take profit zero area because it's a level of resistance. And now, like I was saying, we were looking to come back into that zone around 2300, 2380. So this zone we're looking at, it's also coinciding with the Kijin sin on the daily. So that could be a good bounce level around 2320. So we're watching for those levels keenly. And also our Chiku span, everything looks good. And even if we go to the four hour chart, it still looks good, meaning we're our Chiku Chiku spend is still bullish. It's kind of running into a neutral territory, but we still have some time for that another day. So today could be a very big day for Ethereum uh, to tell us what the next direction could be. But we're seeing this Tenkin prediction coming to a sell up, a pushback down, which 
we don't really want to see. We want to see the Tenkan always above the Kijin, which it still technically would be, but this shows signs of potential movement and we have to prepare for it. So up next, we're going to look at Solana. So Solana I was talking about, uh, it was already 118, it was going a little bit higher. I said, this is an area that I'm taking profit and would likely come and buy lower. I talked about the $78, $79 range, but what I'm also seeing is a flat Kijin. And Kijin bounce trades generally have a movement to the upside, but we're seeing lower highs. One, two, three, four of them in a row. That is not very bullish on the daily. Uh, we've seen a retracement already from all the way to the top of about 32, 33%. So we've had a nice sell off and we're seeing that Kijin bounce but I'm also seeing, you know, we're kind of gonna run into it next, next week if we don't see that price action go back up. We could run into the candles and go on the bearish side for the Chiku span as this band goes into here. If this green level called the Tenkin goes below our Kijinsen, the red level, that could be another sign of bearishness. We obviously aren't at the cloud yet, but we could be running into it. And we saw this on Bitcoin when I was getting bearish last cycle near the top. So we're watching for those things because things rhyme and they repeat. So so what would your action step for Solana be right now? It's as simple as this. If you're in Solana for the whole term and you're already up a lot, you may want to hold a bunch of it. If you see us get below the Kijinsen, the red level, then we might want to think about taking a little bit more profit because we want to secure our profit and we always want to think about capital preservation, right? If we keep some cash on the side from taking a little bit of profit, we see things kind of getting bearish and we sold, let's say at $89, we could buy $10 cheaper and get a little bit more bigger of a bag for Solana. Next up, we're going on to BNB. It's one of those outliers. And what I mean by an outlier is it actually looks great. It's very bullish. We see all signs look pretty good. Now, obviously we need to break above $336, but I'm seeing quite bullishness across the chart. And what I mean by that is our Chiku span looks like it's about to break above uh, and go much higher than the candles if we see a breakout on BNB. We have a Tenkin much higher than the Kijinsen and the cloud is quite far away. So this is one of those ones you may just wanna hold on to and hold your horses and let it come because it has not, BNB is one of those outliers that hasn't really gone for a long, big, huge run just yet. So we could see that happen. So let's be patient with that one. Now we're gonna dive into those alts, which will give you two scenarios, some that are bullish and some that are bearish and what I would potentially be doing in these situations. The first one is Adam. Adam, we're seeing a lot of bearish signs. Now that hasn't fully turned bearish, but it's pretty darn well close. This is one, it hasn't gone down that much from the top. It may be a smart time to potentially pull some profit out. Now, if you're someone who's staking Adam for all these airdrops, that could be something that you may wanna continue doing. But me personally, I would be taking some profit and kind of waiting to see how this plays out. Why? Generally because we're seeing potential TK cross that's bearish. We're about to go in the cloud. Our Chiku span is bearish. This is all not good signs. So we should probably think about that a little bit and be smart to you know maybe avoid holding on it too long and getting sucked into a negative movement on price action. Next up is A0. Now, I think A0 is in a spot where if I'm looking at it and we were in a bear market, I don't normally short in the bull market. It's because I'm a macro trader, so I don't really look for things that are against the grain until I'm sure. But A0 is in a spot right now, which is not bullish at all. They're only missing one thing, which is the Kumo twist, meaning our cloud goes from green to red, but everything else is showing me that it's not very bullish at all. We have the Chiku span that's underneath the candlesticks, which is bearish. We have the TK cross of the red level going above the green level. Our fast EMA being below our slow EMA is very bearish. And then we see that we broke to the other side of the cloud. That is also bearish. We have three bearish signs. Four or four would be basically us having the Kumo twist. This is one, if you're not in it, you should probably be very, very careful because this one could definitely be one that goes back down to a dollar, maybe a dollar 15 and potentially lower. So I'd be looking at that one with some caution, absolutely. And if you are holding it from way down below where it was at a, just under 70 cents, this might be an area where you could take some profit just to pre preserve your capital because this one, I would not wanna be holding a lot of if it's in this situation. Next up is Miria. This one is kind of in a red alert area. Now why? It's got a similar chart to the other guy 
guys, but as you can see, the cloud is super thin and about to turn bearish. We might have that, we might even have all the factors of the last coin, but with a Kumo twist, which would give us the four factors we look at to go bearish on a coin. There's something else to look out for. It's the 21 EMA is holding it down and the Tenkin is holding it down. And it's very likely that if it keeps being held down, that we're gonna see a sell-off. Now, price could only go somewhere to like, let's say uh, 7,000, 0 0.007000. So it wouldn't be a crazy sell-off, but I'm concerned about the way the chart looks right now. And it could be just basically validators that are earning tokens, seeing that it's run up a lot and starting to come back down and taking some profit. So if you are in Myria and you were entering much lower, it could be a very smart move to take some profit and uh, you know put it somewhere else like one of the bullish coins I talked about, or just be safe and wait for a clearer opportunity. I'll show you guys some of those now. Last video you guys saw, I talked about SuiPad. Now, it actually looks great from a charting perspective. It's trading on KuCoin. We had it look kind of shaky a little bit. It's broken out to the upside and we had a perfect Kijin bounce trade. So it bounced off the red level, which is a Kijin, which is an area of support. Like we talked about that, that bouncing area on a trampoline and it started to go much higher. It's almost in price discovery when we look, when we zoom out and and Sui is starting to get quite hot. Since that video, I've started to see a lot of projects being talked about, a lot of influencers and people that are influential inside of our industry talking about Sui. It's starting to gain traction. Some people talked about the fact that Sui itself could have a lot of sell pressure. And I did mention that, that the ecosystem is a little bit more interesting for me right now, but Sui itself doesn't have a lot of sell pressure for quite some time. Sui definitely could go on a large run. So I'm watching for that now, but more interested in the ecosystem plays of Sui. If you guys haven't seen my Sui video, click on the link right here so that you can get all the alpha of that video and not miss out. Up next, one other project to keep your eyes on is EGLD. And as you guys can see, trading gets boring because you look for the same thing over and over again, which is why I became very good at it because there's rules and you see the same things happening a little bit ahead of time. We're seeing with EGLD a lot of bearishness. Now the cloud is acting as support, so it's bouncing off the top of the cloud, but we're having a potential twist right here that is bearish. We also see the Chiku is bearish. Our cloud is still thick enough that we're not seeing that Kumo twist from, from green to red, but it, it could come. Seeing EGLD looking for that move to the upside, let's keep our eyes on that one as well. One last one to look at, then I'm gonna share my closing thoughts on the market, and that one is Tezos. Tezos looks really good. It's broken out of the range around $1.10, and it's starting to break up. We're seeing a lot of bullishness. Uh, the, the 21 EMA is pushing higher, which gives us a short term uh, price action starting to look up. We see the Chiku span is way above the candlesticks and it did bounce off the top of that cloud. So we could see that in some of those bearish potential picks that I showed you earlier. This is a great example to show you what could potentially happen and how fake outs generally happen. It did pull off that bounce off of the 100, 200 and top of the Kumo. It was below the Kijin Sin and we were seeing potential bearish movements coming, but then it bounced. Watch for that on the bearish charts. This one is definitely bullish. And if we see it break out a little bit higher around $1.20, you may want to think about a long, which would go up to $1.48. My closing thoughts are this. Bitcoin ETF gave us a massive run up. What that tells me is we had a lot of excitement and now we're getting a pullback and sell off, just like I thought we would have in January and was warning everybody about. In the short term, over the next week or two, we're gonna see either a movement to the upside or continuation down. I could see both playing out, so now it's time to play defense. Do not go and try to get into every project right now. You can buy the dip on projects that look hot, but the ones that don't, wait for confirmation. In the next few weeks, we'll get that. If we start bouncing like I just showed you with XTZ, Tezos, then you'll You'll probably be fine but we have to play defense always because the capital that we have to buy the dips should be more and more so take profit be smart and we could see bitcoin and we know bitcoin will go in the next three months back up with the having coming keep your eyes on it and don't get greedy so make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel because later this week we're going to put out another market update video and i'm going to tell you what's going to happen more in the short term for most of these projects